Today we're going to reverse the process of multiplying out. In other words, we've been used to having two brackets, using FOIL to multiply them together and getting to an answer like this. The question we're going to ask ourselves today is if we're actually given the sort of answer, can we break it down into the two brackets that will multiply together to give you that. So let's start with one where we've been given some clues already. Can you try and figure out what needs to go into each of these brackets um, in order that when you multiply out you get back to this? Try it for yourself now and then we'll go over it. Alright, so in this case I hope that you managed to get that this thing here would need to be plus 2 because where did this 10 come from? It comes from multiplying the lasts together. So you'd have to have 5 multiplied by 2. And then we just have to check that this middle term works out and we will. 5n plus 2n does give me 7n. And in this case here, the next one, I hope that you did see that this would need to be positive 1 because negative 4 times 1, the lasts, needed to multiply it together to give you negative 4. So you knew that that had to be a plus. And then you just check, do they actually give you the right middle term? Well, yes, because when you foiled this thing here, you'll get q squared, right? Plus q minus 4q does give you the minus 3q. Okay, so this process of going from here to there, from here to there, is called factorizing. And just to give us all the words here, we're going to be factorizing trinomials. What's a trinomial? Well, tri, like in triangle, it means three. So these things here are trinomials because they've got one, two, three terms. Here's another trinomial because it's got one, two, three terms. And factorizing the trinomial means breaking it down into two things that are multiplied together to give you it. Okay, but these ones I gave you now were easy because I already gave you a clue. I gave you the first bracket. So what we want to do is not be able to go straight from the trinomial to the brackets without being given any clues. So in order to understand how we get there, we're going to have a little look at multiplying out again because factorization is just the opposite of multiplying out. All right, so I've written out these two multiplying out Things. These should be very familiar. You've been doing a lot of this using FOIL. If it isn't, then you need to go back and revise FOIL. So all I've done is multiply out x plus 5, x plus 3 using FOIL. What I want to do is use the patterns I can observe there here to help me figure out a way that I can go from the trinomial back to figuring out the brackets. So I want to go from this trinomial back to figuring out the brackets. So first let me make some observations. Let's have a look at this plus 15 at the end. Where does the plus 15 come from? It comes from multiplying this, the last terms, right? So what clues can I get about the last terms from the plus 15? Well, the first thing I can get, the clues about what goes in the brackets, is that they have to have the same signs because the only way I'm going to get a positive at the end is either by having a positive times a positive or by having a negative times a negative. That's the only way I'm going to get the plus 15. So the same signs is the first thing I know. And then the other thing is where does the actual 15 come from? It comes from saying 5 times 3. 5 times 3. So the lasts must multiply to give 15. Okay, so there I've got my first clue. I'm going to look at the very last term in the trinomial. It'll tell me about the last and it'll tell me about the signs. The second place I look for some clues is in the middle term here. And the middle term here, the first thing is, if this is a plus, it means that both the signs in the brackets were pluses. If it's a negative, it means they were both negatives. And then where does the 8 come from? It comes from saying 5 plus 3. 5 plus 3, right? So the lasts add to give 8. All right. So let's see if I can apply this to factorizing. So I've got, let me say, I've asked to factorize 8x plus 10x plus 21. That means I want to figure out what two brackets multiplied together to give you that. 
Well, I know it's got to be an x and an x to give me this x squared. All right. So what were my steps that I looked at can get from here, this clue thing? Well, the first thing is to have a look at the very last term. Straight away, this tells me because it's got to be a plus, I know that I've got to have the same signs in both the brackets. And I know that whatever is in these lasts has to multiply together to give me 21. So let me write down all the things that multiply together to give me 21. And that's, so all the factors of 21 are 1 times 21 and 3 times 7. Those are the only things that multiply together to give me 21. Okay, once I've established that, I go to my next clue, which is the middle. And I need to have that these things must add up to 10. And I know I have the same signs. What are the signs? This thing tells me they have to be plus. So I can immediately say they're both plus. Which of these add up together to give me 10? Well, obviously, 7 and 3. And so I know I get here 7 and 3. If I multiply this out, I'll get... Well, hang on. I've now done my factorizing. I can always check that I've got my factorizing correct just by quickly multiplying out to make sure I do get back here. So x times x is x squared. 3x plus 7x does give me 10x, and 7 times 3 gives me 21. I know I'm right. OK. All right, so that's dealt, this deals with the scenarios where you've got to factorize when you've got a plus at the end, same sign in both brackets. We're now going to look at the next scenario. Again, we're going to start by looking at multiplying out because factorizing is just the opposite. So let's look at the multiplying out and get ourselves some clues from there as to how to do the factorizing. So I have taken these things, multiplied them out, and I've got minus 2x plus 6x gives me the plus 4x here. And here when I multiply out, then I combine, I get 2x minus 6x, that gives me the minus 4x. All right. But what we're wanting to do today is see how would we go from here to figure out back there? How would we go from here to figure out back there? So let's look at the clues, and we're going to do the same thing as last time. We're going to start with the very end, right? Where did this negative 12 come from? Well, the negative 12 came from saying this, the lasts, multiplied together. How do we get it to be a negative? Well, the way we get it to be a negative, the only way you can have two things multiplied together to give you negative is if you've got a negative times a positive or a positive times a negative. So this tells us precisely what we're seeing here, that you're going to have different signs in the two brackets, right? One will be plus, the other will be minus. And again, where did the actual 12 come from? It just came from the lasts multiplied together. So the lasts multiply to give the 12. All right. Now, as in the last case, we then look to this middle term here, the 4x, to try and figure out now where did that come from? Well, can you see where that 4 actually came from? was from saying 6 minus 2. So the things that multiply together to make 12 must also subtract to give that middle term of 4. And whether it's a uh, positive or a negative just depends on whether the negative sign is with the smaller or bigger number. But we'll see that in some examples now. So let's have a look at an example. Uh, let's look at being asked to factorize x squared minus 6x minus 60. All right, so as we've always said, we start here, right at the very end, to get our clues. We know we want to make it into two brackets. And we know it's x times x to give us x squared. Right, so we look at the very end, the minus 16. What does this negative here tells us? It tells us different signs in the brackets, so we need a plus and a minus. And then the 16 itself, we know that these lasts must multiply together to give us 16. So what multiplies together to give us 16? Let's write down all the factors. It's 1 times 16, it's 2 times 8, and it's 4 times 4. Right, because we've got different signs in the bracket, we know the next thing is that they have got to subtract to give us 6. So which of these subtract to give 6? Well, it's obviously 8 minus 2 gives us 6. 
Now all we've got to decide, we know 8 and 2 are what goes into the last, we've just got to decide which one's going to get the negative sign. Well, of course we want to end up with a negative 6, we must put the 8, the bigger one, with the negative sign. We can always check we've got it right by multiplying out. x times x gives me x squared. Minus 8x plus 2x does give me minus 6x. 2 times minus 8 does give me minus 16. I've got it right. I want you to try these three for yourself. Factorize them. Pause the video now. Try the factorizing. We'll go over it together. Right. So the first one. Negative 4 at the end tells me I'm talking about brackets, which I've got different signs. I need the things to multiply together to give me 4. So what multiplies together to give me 4? Four? 4, 1 and 2, 2. The signs are different, so it must subtract to give me 3. It has to obviously be the 4 and the 1. What goes with the negative? Well, I want to end up with a negative 3, so I must put the negative with the bigger number. So it'll give me that. Again, multiply out if you want to to check, just to make sure. Don't write that down because, you know, otherwise you're just reversing it. But actually, just multiply it out in your head to see that you have actually got your answer right. Okay, the next one. Here we've got a plus 20. So that tells me what? It tells me I had to have both signs in the brackets being the same. And I can see here that both of those signs have to be a negative. And obviously, I've got to have y's. Okay. Where does this 20 come from? It's the last, so what multiplies together to give me 20? It's all of these things, 1, 20, 2, 10, 4 times 5. And I know that they've got to add up to give me the 9, so it's that, it's 4 and 5. And then the last one, again, what I've got here is I've got a plus, so that tells me that I have to have the same sign in both brackets. And because there's a plus there, I know it has to be a plus. And then what do they have to do? They've got to multiply together to give me 9. Those lasts have to multiply to give me 9. So what multiplies to give me 9? It's 1 and 9 and 3 and 3. And these must add up to the 6. So obviously it's that, which is 3 and 3. And if I want to be neat, I can just say that that is a plus 3 squared. 